there. Oh, wait, maybe, because I don't think we've officially announced it. Dawn. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, uh, Dawn Foster is joining the Chaos Project uh, in August as the Director of Data Science, which will undoubtedly have uh, probably pretty big implications for this group in particular, I would suspect, as we think about metrics and metrics mo models in practice. I'm still recovering. Um, so Don, if you want to say anything, I think everybody on this list probably knows, but nonetheless. Um, yeah, I, I will say that I'm I'm super excited. I I think like like Matt said, I'm gonna start sometime in in August. So so what I'll do is my kind of first ta first task as the director of data science is start putting together kind of a plan for what I'm what I'm going to do, and let everyone provide feedback on that um, so that you all can tell me whether or not there's some additional things I should do, help me prioritize. Um, so I will I will look forward to that. But that that's probably the first thing. That's probably how I'll spend a, a chunk of chunk of the time uh, when I start in August. Right on. And I will be I will be going to Fosse in Portland, um, and I'll probably in, in July. So that's July sixteenth, seventeenth ish, somewhere in there. Um, so I'll probably do that under the chaos banner because I'll I'll have left VMware. So so Matt, that's why I'm trying to convert my presentation over to the template so that I, I can get I gotcha. <laughs> so I can get my presentation at Fosse using the chaos template. <laughs> Actually, I didn't see if there was a response in the chat this morning. In yeah, I I looked and I I don't think so. There last I checked, they were they were pinging people who they thought might have yeah. something. Okay, but... you need this slide template. Is that what you need, Don? No, I have the slide template. Okay. Um, the the issue is the way the slide template was built. I can't get um, high resolution images of the backgrounds that they used. And I need to convert it to Keynote because that's what I use. Okay. And so I need I need the images that they used to build it is what I'm what I'm actually looking for. Got you. Okay. Or someone who knows more about Google Slides who can somehow extract those the high res images that were used to build it um, because I couldn't figure out how to do that. But don't look at me. <laughs> I was kind of looking at Elizabeth, but you know, <laughs> <lots of gaming. laughs> I, I was going to say I can mess with it. I I don't know that I've ever tried to do that, um, but I can poke around with it for sure. Or we can wait for someone from Africa to to get back to us. Yeah, maybe just give it a day or so. Yeah. Um, all right, cool. So we had a couple of metrics models from last time. One was sustaining contributors. One was business readiness, and then one was this influence metric model. Um, Yuhui, you were going to take a look at this first sustaining contributors. Did you want to, did you have any comments on that? Did you make any progress? It's okay if you didn't too. Uh, actually, I, I prepare uh, a short demo yeah. about the whole contributors. I actually, I just attached this slides. Uh, yeah, I can share my screen. Go quickly through what I got. There you go. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Can you see it? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I actually, I'm, I, I just prepared this very, very short slides quickly this afternoon, uh, and uh, but actually the whole things was 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 discussed for for over over months together with uh, uh, Professor Liang, uh, who also attended today's meeting. Uh, it's about uh, contributors' profile and the contributors' metrics model. Uh, we're thinking we are thinking about uh, a lot how to create the full view uh, of a contributor's profile and how to use that uh, in the different uh, metrics model related to the contributors. So first, we uh, create this contributor profile. We divided the whole profile into three dimensions. First is about a, a milestone or contribution frequency uh, from this uh, dimension, we uh, categorize the con contributors into uh, different role, like stateless, who's never touched a uh, project or community before, Cairo, uh, you know, contribute a little, a, a little bit, uh, more or less, uh, not so frequently, regular, uh, who's long sustaining, a contribution, uh, make contribution to to the project, and core contribution who is take the the main workload, 
in this project. And dormant, which means uh, who is not uh, active anymore uh, as one state. The other dimension is about the ecosystem. Uh, we think all the community was uh, composed of uh, a leadership uh, and a particip participant. A leadership could be uh, organizations, could be one or more a group of organizations, or could it be an individual person or a group of individual person. And the, the similar to the uh, participant uh, concept, uh, categorized into organizations or individuals. The, the last uh, dimension is about types, contribution types. We uh, uh, distinguish the the different contributions as a star fork, which, which is the most the simplest, uh, simple uh, contributions for community. And the uh, uh, issue track platform, like uh, we're using Google, uh, GitHub or Bugzilla uh, to track the issues and 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 the code contributions uh, and its pull request. And also about forum, the different forum, like a Q&A forum and also like a chat, uh, Q and A forum, like uh, or discourse, we use in chaos, and also we use in some chat platform, like uh, uh, like a Slack and the media channels, Twitter's, Facebook, um, and online offline events. Uh, we also do some contributions uh, under these events. So um, we create the whole contributor profile into the uh, into three dimensions. And uh, around these three dimensions, we create a metrics model, a contributor metrics model. And especially I emphasize here with the events uh, impacts. So uh, the whole contributor metrics models, I, I divided into the uh, couple of the uh, different sub models, like a track models, uh, activity model, retention model, Promote model, fit out, uh, fit out model, and re-engage model, and under this each of single uh, contributor metrics model, uh, combined with a pro, uh, contributor profile, uh, we continue to uh, to uh, divide one sub model into another uh, second level sub model, like milestone retention model, ICO retention model, and types retention model. What does that mean? So a track model means the people who never touched the project before, who got a chance to come into the uh, project and, can, and, and make the first contribution. We focus uh, at this part. And the activity model, we will focus on the people who uh, who is not active, who is active or not active in these contributions, uh, in one specific project or community's uh, contributions, retention. You know, just in the context uh, words, it means how many people left, how, how many people leave, and how, how many people reserved into the uh, community and uh, and become the core contributors, uh, something like that. And promote and fade out and re-engage means the different thing. And so the contributor could be get promoted from a casual uh, community, uh, a uh, Cairo contributor to a uh, to a regular or to a core contribu contributors or fade out. He could uh, you know from core contributor uh, fade out into a regular or or or, or uh, Cairo uh, contributors re-engage because some contributors would uh, uh, you know slap into the silence for for over years or months, but because of some event trigger, he will re-engage into the this specific community. So I I list the event impact here. I divided the event into the three types. First is the regular events. For example, the uh, some important holidays such as Christmas, Chinese New Year, and some planned events. Uh, you know, some online offline activities and uh, uh, periodic periodic version release. Uh, and some uh, emergent events, uh, you know, some big news uh, in the open source world or in the industries, something like uh, chat GDP just come up. Yeah. 
so the whole thing is to describe the, all the metrics model around these contributors uh, together with uh, profiles and, uh, and, and event impact. So next slides, I, I would like to uh, you know, uh, give us an example. So here is a contributor milestone in the different model. Here you can see uh, they, they step into the different state, like uh, first the people, uh, first these people who never touched or get, uh, contribute this community before, uh, we treat it as um, stateless. And after, uh, because he makes some first contribution like fork star or make pull request or even ask a question on, on, on some forum, he will, he will be attract, become a Cairo, and Cairo would be promoted to the regular and uh, even so to the call. And uh, all the state could uh, you know, become uh, dormant because of the churn. And also uh, call regular, uh, Cairo and dormant, these four states could be changed from one to another because of the contribution change. Uh, their their states change, and uh, we use this concept and doing some uh, uh, verifications on some uh, big project or communities. So uh, we using three communities as our first uh, tryout uh, examples. So here first is the Rust project. This is the uh, programming language and uh, uh, focused on the focus on the memory security things which is very popular not only some big company how uh, how interested on that many many individual person make a great contribution into this uh, community the interesting thing is that um, I can I can give you a general uh, uh, interaction. Uh, for the each uh, bar means it's a different year. And uh, the current one means uh, the current year's regular contributors. And uh, this uh, purple bar means the, the new regular contri uh, new regular uh, contributors attracted this, this year. So, and this is the uh, current uh, core contributors. And uh, the, the blue one means um, uh, the new uh, call contributors attracted in this year. This is the new call contributors. So, which you can see that uh, the call contributors uh, from this color, yellow color, uh, become more and more. And uh, the, the, no matter the count, and also uh, and they keep the uh, very stable increase increase in uh, uh, trend and uh, the regular uh, amount also inc keep increasing and uh, this increased trend has been kept up uh, over more than 10 years uh, from the, the earliest history from uh, 2010 uh, into the current year in the in the last year 2022 and this is the first uh, community and uh, we can see another community. It's, uh, okay. This is West Code, uh, another very famous uh, uh, open source project, uh, including myself, also using it quite a lot of times. Uh, and you can see that um, in the uh, in the 2070, uh, the contributors, uh, I mean the core contributors, together with regular contributors has become the highest, has achieved the highest number. And after that, it's decreased. But so far, you can see it's it's come up again, which means some uh, uh, some big news or some good news happened into this area, like um, uh, VS Code integrate some uh, uh, useful plugins, something like a Copilot. So, many people start using and the really contribution back to this uh, community. And uh, another 
another example is uh, Kubernetes. As you can see that, and um, actually, uh, we start the, the history data from the 2014, and uh, and you can see in the 2019, uh, the code co core contributors and the, and the regular comp contributors achieved the highest numbers in this year, and after that, uh, it's decreased. But uh, the interesting thing is that the amount of contributors, I mean the core contributors, uh, they are very stable not decrease, they are, they are almost keep the same. So if we cur if you treat this curve, uh, something like a, a Gartner curve, I mean, in the 2019, maybe they have achieved the highest uh, uh, amount, attract a lot of different people into this project. But after that, um, it will decrease, it's normal things, but uh, we believe that because of the core contributors keep the same uh, size, uh, they will come up again into a stable uh, curve, something like VS Code here. And, uh, but uh, still the, the first community, I mean the Rust gave me a shock after I saw this thing, uh, uh, Sankey, Sankey graph. Uh, in the past uh, over 10 years, this project incredibly increased, no matter the regular contributors and the core contributors. So uh, this is just a four, a three, three examples. Uh, I use the uh, milestone or, or frequency uh, profiles and together with, uh, with uh, some attraction some traction and and uh, and the reservation uh, or retention model to describe the different change or trend. I think um, we can see some interesting information from here. And in the future, I would like to extend uh, and implement more uh, metrics models around around contributors. Maybe there's more some interesting uh, information would uh, would give us. Yeah, that, that's basically the whole presentation I gave you. So thanks, Yuhui. Um, you make beautiful things, I can say that. They're very easy to look at and very easy to understand. I love it. Yeah, um, this is yeah. really this is really fascinating. I really um I really love the way you've done this because uh what I what I really like about it is is that you can see what happened to the regular contributors that left. You know, you can see that you've attracted some regulars and then they've stayed regulars. Um, yeah. You know, and, and some of your cores have have left and gone other places. It's it's really it's really interesting to see um, to see the evolution in, in this type of visualization. I, I yeah, I find it really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm I'm kind of curious, like folks in OSPOs, like, would this be helpful at all in an OSPO? And if so, like how, or is it more of a community perspective? You know, how, how might this be useful? I'm thinking, uh, if this question asks me, uh, how to use that, uh, the, for, for the first scenario or case is that for the different, um, uh, community, they have the different, um, and promote or fill out pass. Uh, so if we could um, uh, abstract the general pattern from the different communities, we could clearly know what happened in one community, especially for uh, to to promote more contributors into this community. And also, uh, if we're thinking about uh, uh, what I mentioned earlier about event impact, what kind of thing would have a big impact to this community? If we add some time, uh, time tag into this community's change, I, I mean the whole train change, we could find some interesting thing. And also if we add uh, ecosystem contributor profile, that dimension, we clearly know who have a big interest on some specific community, no matter 
as uh, organizations or individuals. So we clearly know that. Yeah, and I, I think that this is really useful both for both for community managers, um, because I think, you know, from a community manager perspective, looking at the projects that you are responsible for managing, being able to see whether your core contributors are sticking around and whether you have enough regular contributors to replace them and whether regular contributors are actually becoming core contributors is something that I think is important for, for community managers to look at. I think from an OSPO perspective, I think that this would be particularly um, also interesting to look at because I think it's important to, you know, especially for the projects that you're uh, maintaining. So, you know, kind of the company originated open source projects. Um, what's what's happening, you know, with that? Are you are you attracting contributors or is it kind of the same the same group of people continuing to do all of the all of the work? And I think also from an OSPO perspective. It might be sort of interesting to look at kind of an aggregated view across, um, you know, certain types of projects or sets of projects. And I think this is a this would be a good way of understanding whether or not you have enough contributors to sustain the work that you're trying to do over time. I think it would be an interesting way to look at it from from OSPOs. I'm curious. I'm really curious what uh, Gary thinks. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, this model of how we think about contributors is a very in-depth and uh, comprehensive way to think about how people get involved in projects, how they may manage their relationship with the project over time. And I'm interested like what metrics we can attribute specifically to the transition states there, uh, because I saw that really um, that awesome like graph that flow chart of they start here, they go here, they go here, they go here, and it went up here. And I feel like there's a lot to dig into on how each one of those states happens. If we have metrics for each uh, that would contribute to the likelihood of that happening. Um, because this like idea feels um, kind of like a super model, the same way that uh, Dawn, you had mentioned viability feels big enough that maybe we should break it into like three or four different things. Um, it feels like large enough that I would want to know when am I at risk to see a, a maintainer churn or when am I at risk to see a maintainer come back or when am I at risk to see folks turn into uh, from casual to regular maintainers, you know, and is there anything that projects can do to, uh, you know, lean on different metrics or different um, strategies to try to create that change? depending on their state and where they are in their maturity. Uh, as far as like how it fits into viability in general, I think that contributors uh, is a very, um, this would be great to roll into viability because the proxy that I have for what this does is not as uh, clear. It's not as concise as this model with, I think you really just amazed me with this graphic because it looks so cool. Um, but yeah, it's. I hope I said enough to to not lead with that. <laughs> Sorry, I was taking some notes. Um, I have a, a technical question. This is like so uh, amazing that just looking at it and the flow it's so clear like you know the message is crystal clear but <laughs> from a uh, from a technical perspective how did like uh, what is the criteria that you use to classify like okay if they have made 10 commits then they are uh, turning into core and then or regularly like, what is the criteria that help you to move the particular contributor from a core to a regular or a uh, different state like are there any uh, particular data points that you choose to decide those things. I, I I think I think this question is a really good question. That's that's why like uh, for four or five weeks ago I, I got questions on Slack to Dawn. So how to how to distinguish the co contributors and the co or 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 um, so I mentioned a Pareto uh, concept. And uh, and the best factor, something like that. Um, 
but um, after that, I, I do understand how to distinguish the core contributor or, or regular contributor. Uh, regular contributors rarely have some context but, uh, upon different communities. So I would like to, uh, so in my case, I still using the, you know, the whole contributions divided into the 50%, 50%, sorry, 80% uh, contributions in a whole year, which was taken or, or making uh, by the smallest group of people. We treated thing as a as a core contributor. For the regular contributor, we treat we treat thing who should give a sustaining contribution, like uh, at least one month, uh, in the in the twelve months of each year, uh, uh, they have to make at least one contribution in each of single months, which means the regular regular. So, but I I do believe that this distinguish is not a common solutions. To distinguish or, or to give them the cons, uh, definition of regular or call, so I I'm very open uh, to 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 make uh, any uh, new yeah. de definitions for the regular and and the call, mm, and uh, I would treat it as a flexible way to define the different definition based on the different context. That's my answer. May not. Okay, yeah, no, thank you, thank you. This is still helpful. Like I was more thinking of how we can contextualize it to different communities. Some has a different, uh, you know, pattern yeah. of contribution, but uh, still the way you have adopted it, like keeping 50% and the other uh, at least one, which makes a sense in different contexts. So I, I, I still feel like this is a still a valid way of classifying them. Yuhui, can you go back to the slides for just a second? Yep. Can you go up, yeah, to that one right there? So the different types on the left. Yep. Are those are those what go into identifying people as regular core? Uh, I only make an exceptional case for the Star Fork Watch. Which okay. would not count it into the contribution as a as a call or or regular contributions. Okay. Oh, but for the rest of the other contributions, this should be uh, in my case, I re recognize thing as a as a one type of contribution. Okay. In regular and call. Yeah. So in that the graphs that you were showing, those two, four, six, the best that you yeah. can identify yeah. those are others. Yeah, honestly, honestly speaking, I only because of the uh, data sources limitations yeah. so far. Uh, cu currently, we only considered uh, issue part, pull request part, and the Slack part, Slack channel part, okay. and the and Twitter. Yeah. Okay. So those those four are what constitute mm -hmm. the graphs yeah. you were showing. Okay, and then do do you vary the weights of those between regular contributor and uh, or contributor actually no okay. i think um, all the contributions as so far as i know should should share the same weight okay uh, until we got some more uh, you know more suitable way to to give them the different weight okay that makes yeah. sense thank you I think that. Oh, yeah, boy. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Liang. Thank yeah. you for the introduction, and I think the model is really impressive. Uh, my suggestion is maybe we can develop a family of metrics based on the uh, based on the model. For example, the number of new members joining the project, the percentage of core members staying in the project, all based on the the graph. You, Graph model you just have shown us. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, I, I just have a suggestion. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I I have to mention again. Actually, all the thinkings behind the contributor profiles and the, all those metrics model was the was the, was discussed uh, deeply with uh, with the Professor Liang. Actually, we made the whole contribution together on the all those concept. Okay. Yeah.
Okay, so this is, I think we could probably talk about this the entire time, but we do have a few other things on the agenda. Um, I guess one one question for you, Yehui and Liang, is where where do you want to go with this? So, I mean, it, it seems like it's extremely positively <laughs> well received from this mm -hmm. group. And so how, what do you think the next steps for this are? Yeah. Actually, it's the next step. I was thinking this is my uh, first time uh, uh, firmly to 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 introduce this metric model uh, openly. So you 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 could guess what I might want to do in the in my next step. I I want to contribute these all those concepts into the chaos and uh, working together with you guys to to make it more useful. Yeah. No matter in, in, in the community or in for the OSPO uh, uh, people, yeah. So kind of like to Gary's point, do you think that the contributor metrics model is a super metrics model, and what we need is metrics models for say attract, a metrics model for activity, you know, like contributor attract, mm -hmm. contributor activity, contributor retention, and so on like mm -hmm. an individual model for each one of those yeah. And then yeah. collectively. So that would essentially be six models that I'm looking at right here mm -hmm. as we currently define them in chaos. Is that how you see it? Yep. Because uh, you can see that for the each of single uh, model, we divided into again into the sub sub uh, models like milestone retention, echo retention and types retention model. Uh, so in total count, so far we can see it's um, how many, like 18 metrics model we have around this contributors metrics model. They, they are a lot, yeah. Do you think that they would be, the models themselves would be quite similar, just with slightly different descriptions as to what we're trying to accomplish with the composition of those types, those contribution types? Yeah, they could be, but they are uh, rarely too suitable for the different use case. For example, um, echo retention model, um, we really care about how many people has been reserved in one community because of some reasons. Like, like we have released some really good, fantastic features in, the, in one project. And uh, we would say, okay, uh, these big things or events has has helped me to uh, return some people, and a lot of people in that period has been returned. And because of I gave some some really bad features, make me lose a lot of core contributors. That's very important for one communities. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe the first step then would to be to maybe just ask for the next meeting that maybe what I'm looking at, like with milestone echo and types to maybe bring some really preliminary thinking forward mm -hmm. on the description yep. in a document. Would that be okay? Sure, sure. Actually, Dr. Uh, actually, Professor Liang and I have written some something in Chinese. Just to make okay. it convenient, make make <laughs> both of us uh, communicate with each other. But uh, it's really really nice for us to translate into English. Okay. Yeah. That'd be super helpful, um, at least for me to just kind of get my sense on how we can build this out. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. That was pretty cool. <laughs> um. Any any last comments for Yuhui or, or Liang? Okay, thanks, Liang. Okay. So you okay. can do I'm stop sharing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, well, we're I promise we won't get through our entire agenda, but that's okay. <laughs> it's well, it's great when we like when we have a great thing to talk about. And so that's really cool. Um oh. I have missed it because I uh, 
missed our meeting. I, I thought our meeting is next week, so I, I have not got a chance to work on this. Though it's not a big thing, but I missed it in the that the scheduling in my mind. So okay. definitely no next in the next meeting, it'll be done for sure. Actually, I mean, Vinod, too, if you can, I mean, maybe if you can just do it asynchronously. Yes. I mean, because it, like I said, it seems like this one was pretty much ready to go. Right. Perspective. So maybe you could just post in the metrics model channel. Okay. When you think it's good to go and we could just carry on the conversation okay. there. Right. Okay. Thanks, Vinod. Um, and then there was this influence metrics model and it's currently a metric. So is Elizabeth, I'm kind of curious what you think. One of the suggestions was to kind of remove influence as a metric and start looking at it as a model. Do you logistically, like, honestly, just like from a WordPress perspective, <laughs> like what would, what would be required here? Super easy. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, we would have to change the template. And, you know, obviously build that document out in a different from a different perspective. But as far as WordPress goes, it's it's literally just changing the path to the GitHub doc, changing the title, maybe changing the keywords. It's totally okay. fine. Not a big deal. I would say most of the work will will come in just the uh, rewording the doc that we have into and fitting it into more of a metrics model uh, template. Okay. Okay. Maybe you and I can work on that. I just put you and me down. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Um, and then maybe before we do it, we could kind of like what Vinod would do, just take a look at this, like share it asynchronously with folks. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. That sounds great. Um, all right. I, I was going through, this is for Yahui as well. So I was, I kind of went through, through this, I, I cleaned it up a little bit just to get everything towards the top. Um, but one of the requests was to take a look at the different metrics models that we have with respect to the different metrics that are in those metrics models and take a look at which of those metrics are probably higher priority and which are lower priority. Is that right, Liang? Or I'm sorry, Yahui. <laughs> Is that right? That's kind of what you're asking for. Yep. And so yes. it took a little bit of time to go through. I had a few questions that came from this. Mm -hmm. Um, and it kind of raises a, a, a another question. So one was, I think, from the starter project health metric model perspective. I put all of these as high. We have these all pretty well defined. There are, you know, like this is technically um, time to first response. That's technically one metric that we have released in chaos and you have it broken out as two. Mm -hmm. so that's, I have, that's fine, you, you know, and that happened mm -hmm. just a few times. Um, there were a few metrics in here so for example, like code contributor count, I just put, is this the same as contributors based on our list that we have over here? Mm -hmm. And same like code merge ratio, is this the same as change request acceptance ratio? Yeah, they should have some similar definitions actually they all originate from the chaos metrics okay yeah just uh, just uh, i changed the name a little bit because we have change request but here in in github or Giti, we call it pull request i okay. have to make the things understandable okay yeah so i guess that should i should i care too much i don't know what your thoughts are on like these are the metrics that are inside of that are being used by compass. Like if I click on any one of these, these are the metrics that are in chaos. Mm -hmm. Should I care too much? What do people think? Should I care too much about the fact that these don't align perfectly? Mm. Uh, you just say, that's okay. These were inspirational. And these are the metrics that compass is using. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, I understand because in our chaos metrics, we, you really have um, 
you know, there are metrics have a different level. Some some metrics are very atomic. Mm -hmm. uh, we can clearly know the definition and how to how to deploy and implement it. And uh, some metric is kind of general. And mm -hmm. of course, we have some filter to filter out some specific case for the measurement. So in that case, we I have to add some more uh, uh, correct words mm -hmm. to 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 describe this special mm -hmm. case. That's why I I use the different name. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know how to handle, but uh, but uh, as I mentioned, actually they're all coming from our chaos metrics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, what, maybe what other people think here. So, so uh, like, yeah, go ahead, Bernard. Uh, I I think like uh, it's a time if these things are like uh, as a context they feel the different name is more suitable then we can rethink our metrics that we have because it's a uh, we defined on the contextual base or on more on the thinking process but the implementation might need a revised name so maybe we can look at the metrics for the revision in the name can yep. be one option too okay other other thoughts My my reaction is, I'm a, like at first I was like, oh, we should keep these things aligned perfectly, but then the better part of me is like that is <laughs> as different people deploy different metrics in different ways, like that would be kind of an errand or a task in the chaos project that would probably drive us crazy, to be honest with you, as different pieces of software kind of are inspired and deploy different metrics in different ways. That's my reaction, and then for us to keep try to keep these things perfectly aligned, um, like we we have a hard enough time in the chaos project, like keeping our own community in order, <laughs> let alone in order with other communities. Like that alignment, I think, would drive me crazy. Maybe I can add uh, for for each of single metrics deployed in the compass add add one exactly the same reference chaos metric link that would be yeah to tell be, people yeah this was inspired by this metric or these exactly. that would maybe be, that would be probably perfect yeah. and that i do think as part of this um so that's a great suggestion there there are a couple metrics in here so for example commit pr link ratio or there was another one like oh pr issue link ratio that we don't have in chaos and i think this is interesting because I, we've talked about this before and i think some of these are quite quite interesting i, I remember elizabeth has already helped us to create many new metrics especially for those models but uh, i i can't remember do do we already have those metrics in chaos I, I cannot I think remember have, correctly. I don't think we have linked ratio uh, metrics. Okay, okay. But so like, oh. this is also inspirational for, for me. Like I look at some of these, I'm like, well, this is silly. Why don't we, <laughs> like this is okay. such a straightforward metric. It's probably something we should think about anyway. So, um, so with that in mind, I'll kind of continue to go through here and think about, um, Anyway, with, with this conversation in mind, I'll continue to kind of work through this list mm -hmm. uh, and just consider what I own, my own personal opinion is. These are all based on me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, it's it's you know, very important. Yeah, kind of what I'm, what I'm thinking. And I only put these as medium at the moment just because I needed some clarity on this conversation that we're having right now. Yeah. Okay. We could uh, also maybe have the common working group look at the list too and search for those ones. Or, you know, like go through them as a group if you don't want to do it on your own, Matt. We could maybe yeah. take five minutes or 10 minutes as a group and look through these and just decide which we should surface and, and yep. build out. Okay. No, that's, that's great. Um, I was going to ask just this is what I was working on this week was also like you were talking about how the software project might relate for, for the chaos project, whether we might consider um for some of the models that the especially like i was looking at the starter model whether linking that to actual implementation 
could be a priority for places that we're looking at as starting places for people so that when they open something like the starter model, it's like really clear how to get to the pieces of software that have implemented it. So it would be only, you know, what is it, four or five metrics that we're really trying to keep um, some kind some kind of documented link to implementation in place. Would you want to, Jen, do you think that would be in the model itself? So like if I was to come here, like there? That's, that's what I, well, I guess, no, I guess when I, so I, as like, as a user of this, when I was doing this, yeah. I was clicking through to each model and looking for how to deal with it on that page. So I guess it would be more on the model page, but the, yeah, the, 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 more on the metrics page, but that those metrics were part of this model where we're saying it's potentially a starting point for people. We might take extra care about the links to the software implementation gotcha. for those shorter metrics. We have in the past, we had in the metrics themselves, we would have this like tools providing the metric. I don't know yeah. if you ever saw that, but it doesn't, it's really hard to maintain, we found okay. over time. Um, yeah, I, and that's what I was getting. And I, that's why I was wondering about it, doing it like just for the starter metrics or, mm -hmm. you know, so that it was just a smaller list, but even that might just still be too much. Yeah, no, it's it's a fair point though. I, I like to bring people immediately to like like yourself, like just show me the model <laughs> in practice so that I can ask questions against the communities that I care about. Mm, probably something to I, I like that idea, something definitely to think about. Um, okay, we have negative one minute <laughs> left in the meeting, so we're done. <laughs> um thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, it was great. There's more to talk about. And I think we have some things that we can start off with next week. I will say this next Tuesday, the Tuesday, two weeks from now, is that the 4th of July? Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. That's the 4th of July in the US. So I'm pretty sure we're not going to be having meetings on the 4th of July. Um, if if y'all want to meet, that's great. I'm going to be out of town anyway. Like I'm taking my daughter to Atlanta. And so I will not be available, but the meeting will be open and available if you'd like. And maybe we can talk about it asynchronously as well. But my guess is it's going to be pretty lightly attended in particularly in the United States. So, okay, great. Thanks everybody. It's good to see, see y'all. I really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.